Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to Artful Teaching, Joyful Learning TV. My name is Alana, and I help educators and homeschoolers teach with confidence, ease, and a splash of creativity so that their kids fall in love with learning. Now, today we're going to have a bit of a math focus, and I want to share with you some really easy strategies to teach your kids math in a hands-on, experiential, developmentally appropriate way. So we're going to begin first by talking a little bit about how kids learn math, right? How do they actually develop in their math learning? Now, when we talk about math learning, there's many different things that are happening. We've got patterns and relations, we've got um, shape and space, we've got uh, statistics and probability, but the biggest chunk of your child's math learning is uh, number sense. This is sort of the king of math learning in the early years, or the queen. <laughs> so, Children need to have a fundamental understanding of number. They need to have an intimate understanding of number, how number works and how it relates in their world. So as you know, our kids develop through the concrete. That means tangible, tactile. That's why experiential learning and hands-on learning is so, so important. So whether you have stones as your manipulatives, right? Things found in nature, seashells, gems from the dollar store, you name it, you can have any kind of manipulative you like giving them lots and lots of opportunity to build those sets and separate those sets and join those sets together is so, so, so important. So any number of manipulatives will work, whatever you have on hand, basically anything that's not gonna really roll around on you. You certainly don't wanna be using balls or, or things like that, uh, but something kind of that will stick. I love to use stones. We go on a little bit of a nature walk and collect all the stones that we can and we add these to our manipulatives um, section. You can also use pom-poms. Uh, these are great for when we do sort of our 10 frames with these uh, egg cartons. You can use buttons or good old blocks or Lego, anything that's not going to really roll around on you. So as kids move from the concrete, the ability to, to manipulate and build sets and separate and join them, they then move on to a pictorial understanding. So that basically means we're working with tally marks, we're using little circles to represent, you know, cookies or apples in a story problem. They're doing little drawings. And then from there, they move into the symbolic system. And so this is where your child would recognize that that is indeed a number four, which represents four objects or four materials, right? So this is basically how our kids learn. And it's so, so important that before we even start to introduce addition and subtraction um, symbols in their world, that they first have the opportunity to actually join and separate sets of objects, okay? So I'm gonna show you a strategy here that's gonna help them to develop that inherent understanding of what addition and subtraction actually mean to them. And uh, so the first, this strategy is super easy. All you need are two small plates. You can use these from your cupboard or you can use little paper plates like I have from the dollar store and one larger plate. Mm -hmm. You're going to see over here that I've got this on my, uh, on my, on my set here. Now this strategy comes to us from one of my very dear friends, Tanya, who is a wonderful math teacher. And she shared with me this strategy called paper plate partitioning. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to show your child a number or give your child a number and you'll want them to build that set. So here I'm going to use these little unifix cubes. You certainly don't need fancy plastic uh, math manipulatives, but for the sake of ease here, we're going to do a build a set of four. So what you're going to want to ask your child to do is to partition that group of four into two smaller sets. So they can do this any number of ways. They can just grab a handful you know, put the three over here and one over here. So here we have partitioned a whole group. This is part, part, whole. We're partitioning that group of four into two sets here. So we've got one and three. That makes four in all, okay? Now you can invite your child to do another way to show four. What's another way we can show four? So here they would grab maybe two and two, okay? So there's all kinds of ways that we can break this down in terms of part, part, whole. When your child is actually ready, you can even write a little, have a little sticky note down below to show this symbol. So two and two makes four. 
Now, because I love, love, love bringing in the, the artsiness to everything, and I believe that kids learn so well when we, when we can weave in those uh, fun, hands-on, uh, artistic ways of learning, I've created this little tiny math booklet, okay? So this is a, the freebie that's going to come today with your, um, along with this video. But I'll show what this booklet sort of looks like um, when it can be finished, okay? So this is one that I did with textures. This is called a concertina book. And it's got inside here, it's got little tiny flags that just pop inside these pockets. Now, how are we gonna integrate that with math learning? Well, the freebie for today looks like this, okay? So it's got uh, the title page, and then you've got these little flags down below, okay? So this is where you're gonna work with your child on all the ways that they can show one, okay? And all the ways that they can show two. So here we go, let's go back to our paper plate partitioning. Okay, so let's pretend we were working on the number one. Okay, let's pretend your child is working on the, developing that understanding of the different ways to build one. So we would say to them, okay, show me one way to make one. Well, we have one and zero. So over here on their little flag, what you're going to do is encourage them to write one and zero that makes one. You can see that there's a little line dividing uh, that way here. What's another way we can make one? So bring that back up here. Well, I can do this. Zero and one makes one. So we've got zero and one makes one. Okay, now we're going to make this a little bit more tricky and we're going to have two counters. Are you ready? So two counters, how, what are the different ways we can show two? How can we partition the number two? Well, I can do this. So that's one plus one is two, okay? I can do this. What do we have here? This is zero. So zero and two makes two, okay? And is there one more way that we can show the number two? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we've got two and zero. That also makes two. Okay, do you see how we're developing these little, um, these little fact families here? So this is part, part, whole. So we're developing this uh, very concrete understanding about how we can separate and join together different groups. Once your child has gone ahead and uh, done that, and they've, they've made that, that understanding has been made clear, you can go ahead and cut out these flags, okay? okay so for the sake of today's uh, little episode, I'm just gonna work on the numbers one and two, but you have the flags all the way up to the number eight inside, your, uh, inside the handout today, inside the joy sheet. So I'm cutting these little flags out, and this is where we can build our own little handmade math counting book, something that they can come back to over and over again. Now, if your child is already at the understanding of, of addition and subtraction strategies, you can adapt this by having, uh, you know, addition and subtraction questions for each of these. You can kind of make it your own depending on the level that your child is at. So we call that differentiation, okay? So all you'll need for this activity is basically a sheet of cardstock like this. I'm gonna show, show you how to fold it. So this is called a concertina book with pockets. So what you'll do is you'll do a hamburger fold first, okay? So that's the fat way of folding it. And then you'll do another fold. So this is like an accordion, right? So you'll do another fold this way, okay? And then another fold this way, like so, okay? So you'll have this little four-part accordion. The next part is you're gonna to wanna to fold up the bottom to form those pockets, okay? So we're gonna fold up the bottom. Usually I do about a third of the way up, okay? And this is where you're gonna to wanna to have your stapler handy because we're gonna staple that edge and then staple this edge over here. Okay, and this now becomes those little pockets for your fact families. Now this pot, this flag was made a little bit too long, so you have to make sure that it kind of fits. You'll have to do some pre-measuring here, depending on how high you fold that pocket. But now you can go ahead and place those, um, those numbers right inside, these flags right inside. And this folds up and it becomes your little, um, 
your little math booklet. Okay, now what I love about these is they can be expanded depending on how large of a sheet of construction that you have or how small. You can expand them and then you can also add, like I did here with my texture book, uh, you can also add uh, a little piece of ribbon to sort of tie it all together with that stapler. Okay, so this becomes a really fun sort of handmade uh, math booklet. So you can see that they've learned uh, partitioning using those concrete objects, concrete manipulatives to show part, part, whole. And that is the very first step towards a solid understanding of addition. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope that all of you go ahead and grab that freebie. I'm gonna go share with you what it looks like over here. So be sure that you download this. It will be attached to the YouTube uh, video tomorrow when I go to upload it. And you can go and make your own math booklets with your children. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye for now, everyone.